If you're curious about how food is made and like solving problems, consider becoming a food scientist. These specialized scientists investigate a food's chemical, biological, and physical properties. Then they apply what they learn to improve our food in everything from processing to storage. To feed our curiosity, we talked with a food scientist. My name is Dana Pierce and I work for the Government of Alberta at the Food Processing Development Centre in Leduc. And a food scientist is someone who ensures that you've got a high quality and a high level of safety in food that you're going to be purchasing, whether it's from a grocery store or restaurant or your farmer's market. I have a really interesting role here because I kind of get to do two sides of food science that not everybody gets to do. One part, I get to work with clients and entrepreneurs that are either looking to start a new food product and or they're already established and they want to improve or extend their product lines. Sometimes I get to do some applied research and then, um, and then I also do some data analysis. I do presentations, technology transfer. Food scientists could end up working for the government in either research or regulatory sides. You could work for private industry and small or large food processing plants. And there are some R&D laboratories, or you could work in food microbiology labs. As a food scientist, there's an opportunity to work all sorts of hours, including shift work or regular day shifts, depending on which organization you work for. So in a typical day, um, you can have a lot of different things happening, starting out with correspondence with different clients and or research groups that you're working with. That's a big part is keeping that communication open, making sure that any projects I'm working on, everybody knows where I'm at. Also, we could be working on benchtop development of products. And so that can be anywhere from improving an existing product to starting from scratch and making a new one and or doing instrumental evaluation, which would be you look at common attributes, say, in a meat product, where when you bite into it, you have a sensation of how firm it is or how springy it is, how much it takes to chew. But we also have different ways of measuring that without involving humans, so the in that's where the instruments come in. And so we can look at values like that or take things like the pH of the product. How does that fit into what someone in a sensory evaluation, which is where you use people to evaluate the product, how they would describe it? And we try to correlate those two attributes so that because sensory evaluation is expensive and you need specialized rooms for it, some people can't afford to do that, so they'll do the instrumental. And so you want to have a background of how those two things match to each other. Another evaluation that can be done is gas chromatography, or known as GC, and what that evaluates is anything in a food product that can be volatilized, so the aroma, vapors, and then what it happens is when we take a sample of that gas layer, we can elute the different aromas in there and determine what their concentration's at, then um, we might be able to target that within the product to make it more desirable to consumers. Safety in food science is very important not only to protect the food from us in terms of having things like hair or jewelry or unwanted chemicals in the product, but also to protect the food scientist from the food and or the processing. So uh, if I was working in the production plant, I would be wearing a hairnet, a hard hat, a lab coat, steel-toed boots. I may or may not be wearing gloves. I also might be wearing safety glasses if I'm working with chemicals that require that. To be a food scientist, depending on which role you've got, if you're more in, in the food safety side, you really have to be meticulous attention to detail. You have to really enjoy troubleshooting and getting down to the bottom of something and not, be, not willing to let it go because there's always an answer. Advancements in food science, I, they definitely exist. So you can start out, say, in safety as a technician who's doing monitoring and helping upkeep the program to moving in to more of a management and or product development. My job here with the government, I really appreciate the work-life balance that is stressed amongst myself and my colleagues. It allows me to take part in many hobbies, such as golfing and um, getting out with my family and friends. What I find most satisfying about my work is that I feel I get the best of both worlds. I get 50% of the time working with clients out on the production floor, getting my hands dirty, so to say, 
and the rest of the time I get to use more of my mind and I'm working on research projects, developing projects, doing data analysis. So it's 50-50, I get to be active both physically and mentally on this job, so it's great. I'm really happy with my career choice. I find it challenging and exciting and creative and I'm really happy with where I ended up. To become a food scientist, you will typically need four to eight years of post-secondary study. If the occupation of food scientist interests you, there's more information available, including educational requirements and salary ranges in the occupational profiles on ALICE. You may also be interested in the related occupations of biologist, dietitian, or public health inspector. Learn more on the ALICE website and make the most of your future. Visit us at alice.alberta.ca.